Hi, my name is Shelton Johnson, and I'm a National Park Ranger right here in Yosemite. And it never gets old for me to say that because I still find a measure of disbelief that I'm wearing this uniform, that I'm underneath this hat, and that I have the responsibility to celebrate the beauty and to educate people about the history of Yosemite National Park. The reason why I'm so surprised by what I have done in my life and the career that I've chosen is that my background has nothing to do with this kind of environment. I grew up in Detroit. I grew up in the inner city. There were no childhood trips to the national parks. There was no sense that the national parks really belonged to me or belonged to my family. My, my parents are, uh, my dad's from the south, my mom is from Kansas City, and her parents were black Cherokees from Oklahoma. I'm saying this to you because my grandfather was born in Oklahoma when it was Indian territory. So I have that history, that kind of connection to the west. But I think the real reason why I ended up becoming a park ranger is that my father was in the military. And often we were stationed with him in some of these assignments. So we were with him in England and in Germany. And I was five years old in Germany when I had my first encounter with wilderness, with the mountains. There was a family trip to Berchtesgaden. And I remember looking down beneath my feet and thousands of feet beneath my feet, there were clouds. I mean, beneath me, there were clouds floating. And another thousand feet below those clouds, there was the ground. And I remember looking down and seeing the shadow of those clouds as they skated along the surface of the earth itself. And I looked up and there was just sky, so much sky, it was overwhelming. And I remember just seeing snow, just being blown by the wind and blown, being blown off these mountaintops around me. I felt elevated. I felt like I was right on the edge of heaven itself. I felt that I had passed on and the winds were so harsh as they blew against me. I felt that if, I, if it hadn't been for the, the hands of my parents keeping me on this earth, I would have been blown off into the sky itself. And I was terrified, absolutely terrified, but I was also absolutely excited by what was having, happening around me. The same sort of excitement that I'm feeling right now, being here, in, in, surrounded by Cathedral Rock, surrounded by El Capitan behind me. And I'm just overwhelmed by the beauty of this place, even after 25 years. But it was not preordained that I would have this career, that I would have this sort of trajectory. I should have been a lawyer, a doctor, a musician, a classical musician. That was my background. But I took a, a job one summer, a long time ago, over 30 years ago, in Yellowstone National Park. And that experience changed my life. And one of the thoughts that, that came into my mind when I was in Yellowstone is that why hadn't I considered that before? Why hadn't I dreamed of a place like Yellowstone or the Grand Canyon or Zion? Why did not those dreams take my childhood to some place extraordinary? And I've wondered that ever since. And I think part of it is that I never felt a sense of ownership. I never felt invited to these environments. And so that is what I'm trying to do for you, is to let you know that this place that's called Yosemite National Park, and right here, Yosemite Valley, belongs to you. We all own it. It's a birthright of what it means to be an American. But if no one's knocking at your door and saying, by the way, do you know that you own the national parks, that you own Yellowstone, you own the Grand Canyon? That never happened in the streets of Detroit. There was never that knock on the door by someone who looked like me wearing this uniform telling me that I owned America's best idea. But I'm here to say to you that these places belong to you. And a trip to places such as this can change your life. And you may think, wherever you may be, that this place looks foreign, that this place look, looks alien, but it can look alien, it can feel foreign, but at the same time, there's that sense of ownership again. Because a hundred years ago, people who looked like me the Buffalo Soldiers, the 9th Regiment of Cavalry, they were here protecting Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks in 1903, 1904, even back in 1899, they were some of the first park rangers anywhere in the world. And that story here in Yosemite was forgotten. And because it was almost forgotten, my work for the last 30 years has been to communicate that story. The, I, I, the torch was handed to me by my predecessors, like Althea Roberson and Kenneth Noel, and I've been carrying that torch so that all of us are illuminated by that light of history, that forgotten history that's not forgotten anymore. All that we need now is for me to say to you, welcome. For me to say to you, you're the proprietor, you're the owner of these places. They belong to you, so you need to come here. Not just you need to come here, you should feel the desire, the fire to come here because Yosemite belongs to you, as does the Yellowstone. 
and the Grand Canyon and Zion and all the national parks, they belong to you. And so come here, claim that inheritance. And what happened to a young man who came here about 15 years ago, who had never been here before, that same thing could happen to you. We were standing at that footbridge right below Lower Yosemite Falls, which is part of Yosemite Falls, which is the highest waterfalls in the entire world. And he had never been camping before. He had never been hiking before. He had never been to a national park before. He had never been in wilderness before. This was all new to him. He was literally born again into the earth itself. And this was his first encounter with the wildness that is this earth. And we were walking with a group of folks, a group of students, such as this young man. And he just stopped, slowed down and was just stationary for a bit. And we looked back. He was just looking. He was just looking up at the waterfall and he wasn't he was just following the water and the light and the dappling of the shade and the brilliance that was flowing beneath him in front of him and from the sky itself and we walked up to him and we said and I said to him I said are, are you all right and he was quiet just like the quiet here and he said yeah I, I'm all right I said what's what's going on he he looked at me and I've never seen such a look on his face. And I don't think he ever had a look on his face like the one that he was carrying on that day. I think muscles were being used and ligaments were being, things were being used in his face that hadn't been configured to match the, the sort of expression that he had. And it was an expression of transcendence, of transfiguration, of enlightenment. He, he literally had gone to the top of the mountain, but the top of the mountain was higher still, and he was looking at something that his life in the inner city had not prepared him for. Just like my life in Detroit had not really prepared me for this experience. What prepared me was, were those mountains in Bavaria. And for him, he had been taken to the mountaintop, and he was looking up at the highest waterfalls in all of North America, and he was seeing the earth for the very first time. And you could see it reflected as if his face had become a mirror reflecting the grandeur that was around him. And he looked at me, and this is what he said, and I've never forgotten these words. He looked at me and he said this, I had no idea that such beauty existed. That's what he said. And I can still remember the look in his face as he said it. I can still remember the feel of the light on me coming out of the sky. I could still remember the, the spray that from time to time from the waterfall that just fell on me. It was a baptism. And he had been baptized by the earth itself, by the light around him, and by the spray of the highest waterfalls in North America. And he had been changed by that experience. He had been rearranged by that experience. He had been reshaped and reborn by the experience of being in the mountains. Well, what do I remember? I remember that. Yeah, the waterfall's great, but I see it all every day. And when you see something every day, it's easy to stop seeing it unless you pay heed to the world around you that you stay awake. So what I'm saying to you right now is the best place to wake up in America are our national parks. You don't, because you realize when you're waking up, I had no idea that I was asleep. But if you've never been to a national park, you're sleepwalking. You think you know beauty, but you haven't seen it. You imagine that you know beauty, but you haven't felt it. You dream of knowing beauty, but you've never walked into that dream and experienced it. And now you can see it, you can hear it. You can, it's all around me right here. And all this place, all of this place belongs to you. And all places like this belong to you. And I'm the caretaker. It's my job to keep this safe for you. But this is your property and you're the owner of America's best idea.